All right, uh, here you can see my position versus time graph from the thing rolling down the incline lab. I have labeled my axes, it just doesn't quite fit on the screen. So here's time in seconds, and then position in centimeters. This data I kind of made up, so ignore the fact that it doesn't really go very far. Um, because I wanted to look at a technique for dealing with slope here, because this slope is changing. Um, and if I just kind of herp de derp into it and uh, calculate slope like people do on the first day of class, I just go first and last point, and I draw a line connecting those. And there I go, I've got my, got my line. And uh, let's see, this data point is 12.8 centimeters at... Uh, at eight seconds, and I began at zero, zero, so I'm gonna have 12.8 centimeters minus zero, divide that by eight seconds minus zero. 12.8 centimeters over eight seconds, that works out to be 1.6 centimeters per second, and my y equals mx plus b would say position equals my slope 1.6 centimeters for every second times time plus starting point there it goes through at zero so zero centimeters sweet I've got my equation I'm done I'm gonna turn this thing in get my points where's my like stamp yo uh, problem is that this doesn't model this data very well and show you what I'm talking about if I put in a value here uh, four seconds um, 1.6 centimeters Per second times four seconds plus zero that works out to be 6.4 centimeters and so if I go to four seconds here's my data point uh, it turns out it's at three centimeters but my mathematical model predicted that it should be up here uh, at 6.4 centimeters which is nowhere close to where my actual data point is okay so the, te the technique of, of going dot to dot from the first to the last dot, um, that's not going to work very well here. So let's get some points that are, are a little bit closer together, okay? In fact, as close together as possible. So let's stick with uh, four seconds here. And if I use the point after it and uh, do my line based on those, shoop, okay. Um, so I'm using that point and that point. If I calculate the slope here, this is four and a half seconds, and we're at uh, 4.05 meters. And then this is, whoops, sorry, this is four seconds, and we're at 3.2 meters. So 4.05 minus 3.2 centimeters, uh, 0 0.5 seconds. That works out to be 1.7 meters. Oops, sorry, centimeters for every second. Um, you know, I could go through and, and do the model thing there. Or let, let's say I choose the, the point just before four seconds. I use the, the data point from 3.5 seconds. So you can see that changes the slope of the line considerably. And if I calculate that, I get 3.2 centimeters minus 2.45 centimeters over 0.5 seconds, that's 1.5 centimeters for every second. So that's kind of different, okay? Um, so a suggestion here is instead of using um, just the point before or just the point after to use both. And so if I want to know the slope at 4 seconds, I'm going to use the point at 3.5 seconds and the point at 4.5 seconds. I draw through those two, not quite splitting the difference in terms of slope, but it's close. Um, so my data points then, I'm going to have 4.05 centimeters minus, well, minus 2.45 centimeters. And that all happens in one second. Do the math on that. That shakes out to be 1.6 centimeters. For every second, now that's kind of crazy, right? Because that was the slope that I got back in the beginning when I used two points that were, turns out, equally spaced either side of four seconds. This point is four seconds before, 
that points four seconds after slope slope Ooh. so that's the technique um, you're gonna do a secant to find the velocity at four seconds use the data points just before and just after so on your graph the times will be a little bit different because you probably have times every two seconds not every half a second um, but that's how I use a secant to find the velocity at four so go ahead and find velocities for seven other points on your graph if you can might only be able to find six and then what you'll need to do is plot velocity versus time okay uh, for those data points that you have the velocity values for so now you have data to create a velocity versus time graph.